Mitch LaFawn here, welcoming you to my interview with Doro's Nick Douglas. We talk about his new album, Regenerations, his time with Doro, and a lot more. Before checking out Nick, please check me out on Twitter, at Mitch LaFawn, M-I-T-C-H-L-A-F-O-N. And with that, here is the one, the only, bassist extraordinaire, Nick Douglas. We are speaking with bassist Nick Douglas from the band Doro, and of course he's got a new solo album called regenerations uh, good day nick it, uh, always a pleasure good morning yeah good morning, good morning. Mitch. yeah great to talk to you again so we've known each other going back god easily oh, gosh 20 years i would think oh yeah at least huh yeah long 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 time so so let's just get into regenerations first and then we'll we'll talk sure. about the career and we'll talk about doro and blaze and and everything else you've you've done um cool. this album has been 15 years in the making, apparently. So, so talk to me about why it's taken so long, how these songs have sort of um, evolved over that time, and if it's been so long, why now? Mm, yeah, great question. Well, I, I've, been, uh, I've been busy. <laughs> um, you, know, I, I, you know, I'm full-time with Doro, so that's sort of like my priority, and, um, you know, r- doing the whole... Uh, full circle with the touring and recording and, and, and writing and being involved with Doro. Um, and when I had spare time, when I would have spare time, I would, and or inspiration, whichever came first, I would, uh, I would dedicate that to, to writing. And, and I'm, I tend to be kind of fickle about what I write and, you know, the ly- especially the lyrics. So I took my time. I like maybe too long, but I took my time with them to try to get them to a point where they really meant the right thing and and everything is explainable. I don't know why, but I have this um, <clears throat> this sort of determination that when I write a story or write a lyric or something, I, I just can't write something that sounds cool. It has to, I have to be able to explain it. It has to have meaning. It has to come from some kind of truth. So uh, that took a while. And uh, also in the process... I got really interested in the whole recording, the technical side and mixing and and uh, even mastering and stuff. So I was learning that in the process. And, um, you know, I didn't have much budget to hand out to engineers and stuff. I would l- have loved to have had to have worked with a producer and engineers, but I just I just couldn't always afford that kind of thing. So I just decided, well, I'm going to learn it myself. And, you know, so that combined with um, you know, just taking my time with the lyrics and 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 doing all the instruments, playing all the instruments, it just accumulated to a to a fifteen year span. And uh, why now? Because now is now. <laughs> no, it just felt like it felt like it was ready. It just felt like now was the time. It's ready to do this. It's ready to put this out into the world. So. So here we are. Now, are these songs that you submitted to Doro and for some reason didn't work? Or are these songs that you just held back and said, no, 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 no. These are my vision. I, they have to come out my way. Um, well, a, a little bit of both. I mean, there maybe were one or two that I, I played the Doro, but um, in, in that process of, of, of submit, submitting songs to Doro, I learned Doro even more. As, as long as I've known her, I can I can still learn more about her by what she likes and what she doesn't like. When I would, pre- for example, present a song to her, so a few of them got presented. But after a while, I was more certain about okay, this idea couldn't be for Doro. This idea is best not for Doro. Maybe I, you know I can use this. I'm, I'm I'm feeling this is something that I can sing or something that I can do. So therefore, I would just kind of park it over to you know. And call it a Nick Douglas song, and then and then there were plenty of ideas that were Doro songs that got submitted, or Doro ideas that I thought had potential for her. But um, yeah, so it it's mostly after a while uh, it became like it's it's obvious that this is not for Doro and that this is so it was it was easy to determine that. There you go. Um, yeah. On the song before you break, you have Charlotte Gibson. It, it, mm-hmm. Is that the same Charlotte from American Idol fame? Yes, it is. That's so, Charlotte. Yeah. Yeah. So, talk to me how how that came about. Is is this a personal friend, or is this somebody that you just needed a voice and you went and found her? Uh, no, we we were friends. We've been friends for uh, for a while now, and um, and she she's a great writer herself, and we just would always talk about 
you know, all kinds of things. But uh, writing was was a lot uh, that she would. Uh, I played on some of her songs on her uh, couple of her records, and uh, it was really it was like wow, that was really catchy stuff. Really interested in what she did. And then then one day I had this song before you break. I had finished it in the sense that it didn't have a second verse, but in place of that second verse was uh, was a guitar solo. But I always thought that it needed a little something more. Something more needed to be said. And then one day I, I let Charlotte hear it. And uh, she's like, you know, I think I have an idea for this. And I'm like, oh, oh, great. By all means, if you could write a second verse for it, please do. And <clears throat> I think it wasn't that much long afterwards. She, she came back to me with some lyrics. She said, here's what I have in mind. And she sang it to me. I was like, hey, fantastic, perfect. It, it puts closure to the story. And... Um, and it just felt right. So, yeah, she, she lives in Los Angeles. I live on the East Coast in Pennsylvania. She went to a studio and, and sang it there and sent me the files. And I, I flew them into the session here and mixed them. And it just uh, I just love the way it came out. I think it, we turned into a duet, as you can hear. And uh, I just just love the way it came out. Like I said, it just put closure to to an idea that I just couldn't finish on my own. And, and um, there we have it. <laughs> Okay, well, so 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 let's talk a little bit about being sort of a working musician because, mm. you know, you 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 do the stuff with Doro, and most of it is over in Europe. North America is is, is a tough market, but mm -hmm. you you also need to do the uh, movie stuff and the TV stuff, and you you played like you said on Charlotte's album. Um, mm. Talk to me about some of the other things you do outside of Doro that people may not be aware of. Right. Uh, well, um, being, like you said, being a musician or a full-time musician, um, I try to find, and, and most people who, who are, I guess, for lack of a better term, in peers with me, always are trying to find ways to, you know, to keep generating, um, you know, work or creativity or, you know, revenue stuff like that. <laughs> revenue. Yeah, revenue. Sure. It's, <laughs> that's we have part, to that's we part have of the equation, right? The table. Right. Yeah. But also creative outlet, because, uh, you know, even if I had, even if I was, you know, I felt like I was financially fine, there would still be the need to create. You can't, you can't just put a, you just can't put a cork on it, you know. So anyway, so, um, so I, I was always interested in the idea of, of the, the marriage of music and, and film and how that works. Like I would watch a film and then I, I would notice the, the score, or the underscore, or the music behind it. And I imagined what this scene would be like without it. And and it would, in my opinion, it took so much away from the feeling. I'm like, wow. Let's, and I just realized how powerful music is in, in, in movie, in movies and uh, TV and stuff. So especially, I thought, especially you know, in suspense, uh, suspense movies. I mean, watch, oh, yeah. watch a James Bond or 24 or Homeland and take away that underlying soundtrack. And, yeah. and, and it's just very, very vacant. It's, 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 it dries it right up, yeah. doesn't it? It just, it just, it, and, and it can be so suggestive. It, like I've heard, um, I was just watching a film uh, last night where, uh, there was something. There was a scene going on. It seemed fairly, say, you know, like melancholy. But there was a sort of a minor key, suspicious vibe going on in the music behind it, which made me, as the viewer, believe something was coming up. Something there was going to be a, a turn of uh, of of emotion here. And sure enough, it was. And I just think, yeah, I was just once again really impressed with how how well music can really steer a movie and. Um, so, you know, I have uh, friends who are local filmmakers here in Pennsylvania who asked me to uh, supply some music for their uh, for their film, uh, filmed in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. It's uh, it's called the Poconos of uh, Pennsylvania, Pocono region of Pennsylvania, if, you're, if you've heard of it. And uh, it's like a, um, I guess it's like a sort of a good guy, bad guy, gangster kind of film. And, uh, yeah, I, and I, I saw some of the reels and stuff and I immediately had these little you know these sounds in my head of, of where this can go what can get what it can do so he only needed about so many uh, you know scenes done and but i ended up doing everything <laughs> because i just said you know what just in case something works out somewhere else and i was really enjoying it i just it would just not stop flowing 
so I just I just went for it. I just kept uh, just I wrote something for every scene, and then he has, then the filmmaker had the choice to just you know pick and choose whatever they wanted. So that was that was an awesome experience. Uh, also, I've submitted uh, songs to um, uh, a licensing company that uh, w- one of the songs got to uh, an American soap opera called All My Children. This was years ago. I don't know if you've heard of All My Children. So, oh yes. uh, yeah, American soap opera. And uh, and then uh, and then another one and oh gosh I can't even remember what the name of it was so twice it got on um, um, all my children time TV yeah oh, okay. all my children and there was I think it was one life to live oh I can't remember exactly but that was also really like unexpected and like wow and and people have always kind of said to me you know your music could could be in movies I can hear it in TV I'm like wow cool so that was you know more encouragement and stuff and. Um, yeah, it just it's just something that just can all is just there and just I have when I have time for it when I can do it I would love to do it some more. Also, uh, I wanted to mention I was asked uh, two years ago to uh, narrate uh, audio books for a friend of mine who was a wow. professor at a college. But uh, before that, he he's written he's been successful written written many books. Uh, he's a Native American author and he writes like a lot of native american themes and and i thought yeah this is great i would love to try you know I, and having never done anything like that before i've learned a lot along the way i learned it wasn't as easy as i expected it to be and it took a lot longer than i did it, it, longer than i expected it to be especially in the editing of it but um once again it's uh, it's it's just another outlet another creative pipeline in which to you know to to move with and I was just, I love it and I took acting lessons years ago in the 90s and I always wanted to get back into it in some way so um so that that's uh this is one way so there's one um one book out now uh the, the author's name is Craig Street and the uh the title of the book is The Bleeding Man and Other Science Fiction Stories <laughs> it's six short stories and it's available everywhere now and I'm working on another book of him now called Paint your face on a drowning in a river. Uh, Native American story, just great stories, and, uh, and I hope to keep doing them as long as I have the the means and the time to do it. Right, and, and it's just straight voicing. You're just reading the book out loud and getting it to the audio book format. Right, exactly. Just I'm I'm doing all the wow. characters and 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 trying to change my voice a little, give each character a voice, so you can sort of diver, diff differentiate as you as you listen and stuff and uh yeah and i listen to some other commercial audiobooks to get ideas to once again educate myself into it uh and um yeah i just i enjoy it it's yeah. a lot of work but uh when i hear the end result i'm like wow yeah cool I did it. oh it's a, it's a crazy amount of work i've known other people yeah. that have done audiobooks and you know, you, you've got this 45-minute audio book, and they're like, it took me nine months because we had to, you know, and you're like, what? what, you, what yeah. What? <laughs> what? Um, yeah, ed- editing one page take, can take an hour or more, and yeah. there's two hundred, there's over 200 pages in the book. So, yeah, I, I could totally, totally get that. <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, you, inflection and blah, 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 and it's like, well, it didn't sound mm-hmm. like, oh. Anyway. Um, right. Let's yeah. quickly talk, uh, before we get to Doro, because that, that's, the, that's the cherry on top. Let's, let's get mm-hmm. to uh, Blaze Bailey. You were part of the Blaze band in the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. Um, all, from all I can tell, it was just touring. You didn't do any recording with Blaze. No, no, no recording. Unfortunately, uh, it, it didn't get to that. But uh, we we toured, uh, I think, two thousand three, two thousand four, and um, and we just had a blast. I think all we did was laugh. I just remember being in in the van or the bus and or going where we were going and just laughing all the time. We just had a great time. It was a great band. We had uh, Danny Lobler, who is now in Halloween on yep. drums yep. and Luca Pranchata, who is uh, of course with us in Doro. I met him uh, in the blaze, uh, in the blaze lineup. That was great. Uh, and the former um, Doro alumni member of uh, Oliver Palatai, also on guitar right. and me on bass and uh, yours truly on, on vocals. And we just, we just had a great time. We just had a really good, great music, great playing and um, from everyone. And yeah, just it was fantastic i wish it would have lasted a little longer but everyone had schedules and this and that and other things to do so you know 
we what? had fun while it, while we while we had it going. Yeah. <laughs> did did you ever get into any kind of writing sessions with with Blaze in terms of let's make an album or was it really, you know, let's just tour, let's forget about recording, let's just get out. I on think the road. there. Yeah, we didn't really have a uh, we didn't really organize any any uh, scheduling or agenda. We we toured and I suppose had we been able to keep it together longer or knew that we could keep it together longer, it, it may very well have come to a writing session, but it, it never, it never got to that point. Never unfortunately. That point. Well, yeah. no. did, did he tell you any great Iron Maiden stories? No, no, I just, trying to remember it was so long ago. I mean, we, he talked about it, not all that much, you know, uh, not that he was avoiding it. It just, uh, it just didn't come up very often. I remember him telling me, how um, some of the keys were were hard for him to you know to the sing hits. because his natural key his natural vocal range is from here to here and I remember it, he was he had a tough time with it but uh, the guys you know they've been playing the songs the same way for so long that they you know they couldn't change it and uh, it was fine but he he uh, he toughed it out and he did it and uh, I have a lot of respect for him I'm yeah, no, sure that wasn't easy I'm sure that it was was not easy shoes to fill to uh, to come in, uh, in in Bruce's place, but he he did it. I think he did an absolutely admirable job, and uh, he's a tough, hardworking guy. And uh, yeah, and it's yeah. an unforgiving spot to be in. Whenever you replace mm. uh, a Rob Halford or a, or yeah. a Bruce or you know or, or Paul Stanley or, or Robin Zander, there ju- there are just some vocals that you, you're you're doomed to be you know beaten up on if you try and. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's, you know, you're filling some very huge shoes, and uh, it takes it takes someone of of courage to uh, first of all be, uh, you know, set it, let, let us set aside ability, but the courage to go in there and and just assume these roles uh, from these iconic singers is uh, yeah. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage. And I love the fact now that once in a while in shows you'll see. Um, Bruce Dickinson cover Man on the Edge or some of the Blaze stuff, which is great. Now, mm. Doro. He, let's get to Doro. Mm-hmm. Lots of Doro yeah. talk. She sure. is, she is of course, <laughs> going to be doing some uh, Triumph and Agony 30th anniversary full album shows at Sweden Rock. Blah, blah, blah. They're going to bring back Tommy Hendrickson, Tommy Bolin. Um, will you be part of that at all? Yeah. Yeah. The, the whole band, uh, at least as far as I know, we, we, we talked about it just a little bit. We've recently gotten the... Um, the, the set list and how, of how we're going to do it. And uh, so we're, we're, everyone's in the process of, of learning the songs, all the songs, getting it together. But uh, we all intend to be there with, with the guests, with the Tommies, I suppose, with, with both, you know, Tommy Bolin, and Tommy Hendrickson. Um, I, actually, I, I'm not sure. I haven't heard that Tommy Hendrickson would do it. I've, I've heard it from other people, but not directly from the Duro camp. So, I'll find out as we get there, but um, well, just I can tell you this. Say that. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm friends with uh, Tommy uh, on, okay. on Facebook, and he posted uh, a while back that he would be doing the Sweden Rock show and maybe some other ones. So, oh, great! So, who awesome. knows? I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm certainly cool. not going to quote Facebook as a source <laughs> of of knowledge, but uh, it was posted. So there you go. But how right. is that going to be for you? Because you know, you've sort of been playing these songs for 20-some years, 25 years, and now, mm. are, are we doing it really from All We Are all the way down to For Emer, for Emer or are we sort of mixing it up? How, how well, is it going to be I, presented? We're going to learn everything. We're going to practice and rehearse the entire album, and whether it's in the sequence of the album or not, I can't say that for now. I can't say that for sure. I, I don't know, not because I'm hiding, uh, hiding it, but I, I really don't know. I suppose when we get together and and organize everything, putting put it in rehearsal, we'll know what works. Dora will know what works best, and uh, and we'll go with that. But uh, yeah, as far as like who's playing on what song, I I don't even know yet. I don't even know. I'm just going to prepare everything. I'm just be ready for anything. And uh, you know, when when Tommy steps in, great, cool. Or I, yeah, I don't Tommy know how said- it's going to work. Now, yeah. <laughs> now, of course, there was the uh, the uh, 2011 version with bonus tracks. We're, we're we're sticking to the original 1987 version, though, right? We're doing the 10 tracks, not the 14. Yes. Okay. Correct. Yes. Um, how is that for you, though, in terms of a challenge learning a full album? Because you know, when you do a set list, 
there are peaks and valleys. You know, there's a fast song, fast song, slow song. Mm. Get, you know, not necessarily the case with an album. So, so how is that for you to sort of get in that mindset of putting together an album show? Mm. Yeah. Um, well, I think that's going to be a collective experience with everyone as as far as how to replicate the dynamic of it. And the only thing I could think of is when they when they recorded the album and they made the sequence of songs, there was some some idea, some strategy to it. This song goes here, 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 here. So I suppose if we start with that basis, all right, let's say we do the whole album start to finish in sequence. I, I don't know if we will um, see how that rolls. Will that how will that um how, the, how will that work live? Will it work live? And uh, and we'll have to see. But as far as, as learning everything and, and the mindset, I, I don't think it's all that much different than than what we're doing, other than the fact that we're you know we're paying respect to this uh, to, to the legacy of this great album, this fantastic album that uh, took Doro and and Warlock and exploded them, yeah. you know and. Uh, and it's just it's just our it's it's paying homage to it and uh, you know and uh, yeah, yeah we'll <laughs> so see. we'll we'll have to see yeah. Getting Dora over to North America is uh, sometimes a challenge. Will this mm. be brought over to to stateside or or Canada? Yes, there's every intention to bring it to North America, uh, U.S. and Canada. I I don't know of anything confirmed yet, so uh, you know. I, I can't say. I don't think there's anything current confirmed or booked yet, but uh, it, there's every intention to do that. And uh, I suppose we'll find out soon enough in the next, hopefully, the next couple of months, we'll know something. So it's, it's not just a one and done then. Hopefully, we'll, we'll see maybe 20 shows or 30 shows, kind of. Oh, thing. yeah. Okay. I mean, that's, 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 we, we have the year schedule planned, but there's also some gaps open. For for the reason to to fill it with with this show with the 30th anniversary show so of Triumph and Agony so hopefully yeah hopefully we can do that and hopefully we'll know that soon when and where exactly and uh, just have to wait and see yeah now that 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 would be awesome now yeah your first album with Dora mm-hmm. Angels Never Die mm-hmm. you've got Jack Haunty and Vic Pepe who who were with Alice Cooper you've got Ryan Roxy playing guitar who's now with Alice Cooper. What was that experience like for you coming in and being in with these sort of like great production team? You've got George Marino mastering. You've got, you know, you've got all these sort of very famous names in and around mm. this project. How was that for you? Uh, just an amazing learning experience. Just really great. It was the first, like you would say, it's the first actual studio album I've been involved with. There's some live tracks that were on Rare Diamonds that was on, but that doesn't, you know, that's completely different than being in a studio and, and harvesting ideas and, and watching or witnessing that having that happen. But, um, I, I just, you know, it's, it's the learning experience of everyone's dynamic working together, the chemistry of it, observing it, participating in it. Um, it was a little, um, how can I say? I was a little sh- uh, humbled by things, and uh, and then there were times when just I, oh, I had this great idea, and and I didn't have to feel hesitant about about saying it. I could just come out and say it, and I felt part, very much part of the team, and I was welcomed in it, which was um, which was a blessing too, you know. So um, I I can only say it as a, as a, as an enriching learning experience that I I knew that this I knew I wanted to take it all in learn as much as I could and just carry it with me for the rest of my life. And yeah, I pretty much did. Yeah. Jack, Jack, uh, Jack Ponte, just uh, Ponte, I guess it's, it's just great. Ponte. Yeah. Ponte. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the last studio album, raise your fist. Mm-hmm. We're going back to 2012, five mm-hmm. years ago. Where are we in terms of the next new Doro of all original material? Mm. We've already started putting some ideas together. Uh, for a new record so it's just uh the way we've been doing it because everyone lives uh you know pretty far apart so a lot of things are done obviously over the internet as far as hey guys you know like sending mp3s or scratch ideas to the guys and 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 to borrow and uh and just um you know if something vibes or clicks with her she'll she'll pursue it and uh and uh and yeah we'll just go from there And and whenever we can get together in the same room as a band, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll record that. But, um, um, we've already started with ideas. I think we're not even to that point yet. We're just getting, getting our little ideas together. When we get together later this month, 
for um, Full Metal Mountain and four shows in Russia. I think we're going to start talking about that. But the big thing right now is obviously p- planning for the uh, Triumph and Agony 30th anniversary right. shows. Now, th- but, that's, of course, going to lead to a, a DVD and a live CD, I would imagine, right? I mean, you can't just let that opportunity fall by the wayside. Oh, yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I haven't heard that, but, uh, uh, you know. Well, well tell her I demand it. I'm demanding okay, it. Okay, <laughs> that's it. Done. <laughs> that's the way. Um, you, you, let, let's wrap up with these uh, last two questions. Uh, first sure. of all, just tell me about touring with Doro, because you just mentioned Russia, and I mentioned Sweden Rock. There's a lot of European stuff, but mm. you, Johnny, and so on are, are in the States. Um, mm. Does that complicate stuff for you? D- does, it, does it make bookings more difficult? Is it hard for you to be away from the family? Just, just I mean, yeah, yeah, I hear. Yeah, it's it's really it's just a plane. It's just a plane ride. As as far as everyone getting together, we just everyone hops on the plane and we meet and then we go and we just happen to have the longer commute, Johnny and I, <laughs> over the Atlantic. But um, it's fine and it's been like that for many years, you know. And uh, so it's 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 that. I think if anything is difficult about it. It's it's the physicality of, of moving across many time zones qu- quickly, and for me, I've all, I've never been really a good sleeper, so that that's that can be kind of tough on me. So I spend a lot of time just just chilling out during the day and saving and storing energy for the two hours that, that we need. That's 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 the way I work, you know. Everyone is unique, but um, uh, and as far as being away from family, it it's it's been so long that I've been doing this. It's just it's the norm, you know that uh, that I would spend some weeks away from home. It, it's okay. It's fine. Yeah, it's just the way it it's goes. The, and, it's just the way it is. And and when coming with Doro, it's like that's family too. You know, we we've, we've been together so long and we're so used to each other. We get along great. You know, I'm with the Doro family when we get together. We're all together. And that's, well, you know, I, that's I gotta awesome. say that that's a testament to her because. As a solo artist, she could easily just get five new guys every tour, every album. Yeah. Um, Absolutely, sure. She, she's stuck with you and Johnny. And um, what does that say about her? That I mean, it's just, just it's remarkable, right? It, it's 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 remarkable. It's it's a blessing. It's um, I'm extremely grateful. I think about that, you know, every so often on the road and off. Like, wow. Like you had just said, she could have very well just, you know, gotten a new lineup at, at any point. She maybe has a a creative motive to do something different. She needs new players. That would be completely understandable. But um but no, she she's she's been uh she's she's been there for us. She's she stuck with us and you know, we stay with her. We just I think we just enjoy each other's company. We're like I said, we're family and it just it's comfortable in that regard. So Thankfully, uh, we can we can just keep going with that, and, and yeah. uh, I hope we always can. <laughs> yeah, let's let's hope there's another fifteen or twenty years in there, and then and then we'll yeah. finish with this. Um, how difficult or complicated is it to be in a band with Johnny D? I mean, doesn't he just drive <laughs> you crazy all day long? <laughs> is he going to hear this? <laughs> of course he is. Uh, I'm going to That's extract difficult. this click and pl- that clip and play it for him uh, personally. But no, oh, no, but. That's um, great. You of course do other stuff with with Johnny. Yeah. You you do yeah. some, um, I guess we call them cover bands. I guess I mean, uh, you know you, you do what, other bands on the side yes. with him. Well, in sure. fact, in fact, why don't we explain that? Because I, I'm I'm obviously unclear. I know he does the in excess tribute thing. Are you part of that mm-hmm. too? No, okay. no, I'm not. It's, I've seen it though. I've seen it twice now. It's great. Yeah, it's um, really really good. So what are you doing with with Johnny on the side? And that sounds uh, it, wrong, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's whatever, you know, I mean, we'll, you know, someone will need a, a rhythm section for a recording or, or, uh, or headbangers ball. Or this, this, this sort of this, uh, eighties metal tribute band we've had, uh, we, we try to do whenever we can. And we just, we live close together. We're only about an hour apart. So, uh, so we, we can, uh, you know, we could do things together in, you know, in this studio sense or in the live sense pretty, pretty conveniently because we don't have to, you know, it's not like a long um, trip for either of us. You know, if we're, if he gets something that need, someone, an artist needs a band to record, Oh, I know a bass player. And it's the same with me. If I, uh, if I am aware of 
some recording that needs to be done or a show that needs to be done, I have a drummer for you. So it's like we we uh, we try to watch out for each other and and um, you know. And, get and, you each know, other involved. That is an important pairing because once you get a rhythm section that's locked in or dialed in, mm. as they'll say, uh, that's that's tough to beat. I mean, when you got a, a drummer and a bass player that just aren't on the same wavelength, it, yeah. it screws up a recording. So it's nice to have that pairing. Um, I, guess, I guess I lied here. Well, I forgot one thing. You did um, a, a guest spot or you played, I guess, on the Chris Caffrey Pins and Needles album. Um, mm-hmm. just, just, just what was that like? And, and, you know, Chris is such a great talent. Um, I guess yeah. you, must, you must have been honored to be asked to be on it. And, and so just talk to me quickly Absolutely. about the, uh, pins and needle album. Absolutely. Uh, Chris is someone who has a fantastic work ethic, inspiring to, to say the least, um, because he's talented as, like you say, and uh, and he's very quick. He'll come up with ideas very fast, and he's able to make decisions very quickly, which I admire because I'm terrible at that. I, I have to uh, I have to debate something for a long time before I can decide. Okay, this one, this is a better idea than that. Or so. But uh, I just seen how how quickly and efficiently he works, and that's uh, that's inspiring to me. So so to be involved in the album um, was. Oh, it's great. It's Chris. You know, it's Chris Caffrey. He's a friend as far as someone who I, I respect as a musician. So, uh, yeah, I was very happy to be there for him. And uh, and and learning his stuff was something um, sort of new, not really too new, but it was just, you know, his way of doing things was sort of educational, too. So and I love to learn. I love to learn new things and stretch out and try different things. And Chris gave me the opportunity to do that. And it's great that I was able to be on the album, and I hope I can be there for him in the future. Yeah, absolutely. And, of course, uh, the new Nick Douglas album is called Regenerations. Mm-hmm. And uh, there you go. You see, it, wasn't, it, was, it was painless, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even, if it's no at the, even if it's early in the morning. But there you go. Uh, Nick, always, yeah. always a pleasure. And I certainly do yeah. look forward to seeing you and, of course, Johnny on the road and Doro yeah. uh, as soon as possible. Hopefully we'll get you in... Montreal or Ottawa or Toronto or somewhere in the Canadian North at some point, but yeah, great. Let's hook up. Let's get in touch. If yeah. if we find out there's a date, I'll let you know. Or if you're aware of something, and yep. you know, let's let's hook up and talk. Of course, you're invited anytime, Mitch. Absolutely, anywhere. Thank you, much uh, much appreciated. And uh, I will tell everybody, please check out Regenerations. It is out March 10th, 2017. Yeah. Just uh, there you go. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you, Nick. Mitch. Have a good one. Thank you. Take care, man. Bye-bye now. Peace. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. And there you have it, folks. My interview with Doro's bassist, Nick Douglas. Head over to nickdouglas.com for more about regenerations and everything Nick is up to. And for more about me, well, there is Google. Just uh, Google Mitch LaFon. That seems to work. But uh, if you want, there's also Twitter. At Mitch LaFon, M-I-T-C-H-L-A-F-O-N. And with that, folks, I bid you a fond farewell. Bye for now.